transformers are devices that can transform, or an easier way to think about this is change the voltage of the electricity that's applied to it. Okay, they're not transformers robots, robots in disguise, unfortunately. But that's an easy way to remember it if it helps. So they transform the voltage, they change the voltage. Now they're set up like this. They start with an iron core and it's in the shape of a square as you can see here. Okay, an iron core. Now we know that iron is magnetic. We know from electromagnetic induction that if we want to increase the electricity that we produce, we put an iron core in there, it amplifies effects. So it's really useful at kind of amplifying and transferring electricity. Now I should say that the explanation I'm about to give today about transformers is a kind of simplistic and basic one but it's one that will easily get you through GCSE and probably through A level as well. So there are some simplifications and I'm going to use some words that are probably not particularly technical but this is the way that I think about them still because they're quite it's quite a difficult concept. Okay so the iron core is something that's really good at transferring or amplifying the effects of electricity. So I start with my iron core. I then have around the iron core some coils of wire and from electromagnetic induction we know that coils of wire are another really good shape or geometry for transferring electricity or amplifying effects of electricity. Okay, So I've got here a coil of wire and I'm going to draw it really badly. It goes around the iron core but you can't really see that right now because of the way I've drawn it. Okay, But the iron core is inside that. Now this is called the input or primary coil. Now this is where your electricity goes in. Okay, it goes in one side, it comes out the other. So electricity in here. I'm going to write that in nice big letters. So we call this primary coil, we say that it has a voltage across it of Vp, a, a primary voltage. So maybe you've got uh, electricity coming in from the mains at 230 volts and you want to change the voltage to make it something safer. So maybe if you're, um, your mobile phone chargers, they're quite large, the, the plugs are quite large because they have volt, they have transformers in them, to decrease the voltage, to change it from 230 to something that the phone can handle. On the other side of this iron core, you have another coil of wire, also badly drawn. Like this, okay? This is called the output or secondary coil. Now these two cores of wire aren't touching, they're only connected by this iron core here. Okay, and across this secondary core when it's working, you get a secondary voltage, Bs. Now that voltage is different to this voltage, and this is the whole point of the transformer. It changes the voltage. So you might go in with 230 volts, and it might be reduced maybe to 110 volts. A lot of elect um, American electronics run in this, so you need to transform it to reduce down to 110 volts. Maybe it's 120, but it's around by that number. Okay, so that the transformer is changing that voltage. Now it does that because of these coils, and you can see that these wires aren't touching. The only thing that's connecting them is this iron core. Okay, so an alternating voltage goes in. VP is alternating. It's made via EM induction. It's mains electricity. This only works for alternating current. So it's an AC current. Now the alternating current produces an alternating or changing. magnetic field. Okay, So it produces a change of magnetic field here. Okay. Now the iron core is really clever. The iron core transmits or well, yeah, transmits or makes it travel this magnetic field because it's iron. Okay, So that, that alternating magnetic field comes around to here. Now on this side I'm going to switch to green here. Now, the alternating current here, I mean, sorry, not the alternating current, the alternating magnetic field, the change in magnetic field, induces an alternating current in the secondary coil. So this iron core is moved around the magnetic field, it's transferred it to over here, and the alternating, the changing, the moving magnetic field has produced, because we've got a coil of wire, we've got a magnetic field that's moving or changing, it's produced via electromagnetic induction, so via EM induction, it's producing another induction, sorry, induction, another current over here, another voltage over here. Now the size, the size of the voltages, 
that's produced over here compared to over here depends on the ratio of coils. So if I have more coils here than here, I increase the voltage. So if I started with 10 coils here and went to 20 coils here, I've doubled the number of coils, I would double the voltage. That's called a step-up transformer. If I decrease the number of coils, so say I had 5 coils here and 10 here, that would halve the voltage. So the size of the voltage depends on the ratio of coils. If you increase the voltage, it's called a step-up transformer. If you decrease the voltage, it's called a step-down transformer. And we'll look at that in a bit more detail in the National Grid um, video because it's really an important part there. Okay, that's basically how it works. I have a changing, I have a changing voltage and current here. It induces a changing magnetic field in the iron core. The iron core transfers it to the secondary coil, and it then induces an alternating current in the secondary coil. And the number of turns on this coil compared to the number of turns on this coil determines how large this voltage is going to be. And if we have a less number of coils, we'll have a smaller voltage. If we have more coils, we'll have a larger voltage. The whole point of this being called induction is because this happens without any moving parts. This happens without these wires touching. Okay, it's induced. It is transferred by this iron core. Now, transformers, that's the main thing you need to know about how they work. But you also need to know about the transformer equation. And that looks something like this. It's probably the most difficult equation you'll have to use in GCSE physics, or one of them. Um, but you need to know how to rearrange it, and that could be, that's what can be quite difficult. So it starts off this way. The voltage across the primary coil divided by the voltage across the secondary coil is equal to the ratio of, so this is a ratio, the number of turns in the primary coil divided by the number of turns in the secondary coil. So I go back to here. This divided by this, VP divided by VS, is equal to the number of coils on this side divided by the number of coils on that side. And that's because we know that the ratio of coils depends on how much voltage is going to be transferred or what the size of the voltage transfer is going to be. Now we can write this in a slightly easier way. We don't want to write all these words out as VP over VS, so voltage across primary divided by voltage across secondary, is equal to the number of turns on the primary divided by the number of turns on the secondary. Okay. Now it's quite a hard equation to use at times because it can get a little bit confusing about all the the subsections um, and rearranging it. So we're going to have a look at that now. I'm going to write it really quickly just at the bottom. VP over VS equals NP over NS. But here's a question. It's quite a simple question, but it involves some rearranging, so it can be tricky at times. A transformer has 200 primary coils and 240, 240 secondary coils. If the primary voltage is 12 volts, what would the secondary voltage be? So I start off with my equation. Now I want to know the secondary voltage. That is Vs. This is what I want to know. Now, if I want to know that, I need to rearrange this so I get Vs equals something. Now, I can't use a triangle for this because there's more than two terms. Three terms, even. There's four terms, so I can't use a triangle. I have to rearrange it with algebra. But we're going to do that. It's quite easy. So, I want Vs to be at the top on its own up here. But the first thing I need to do is I need to move it up to this part here. So, I can't, to move things across, I have to, if it's being divided here, I need to multiply it over there. So I've got VP equals NP divided by S times by VS. Now, at least I've got it on the top, but now I want it to be on its own. I want to get rid of these. Now, NS is divided on this side. So now, to go onto the other side, it needs to go up and be multiplied. NP is multiplied on this side, so to go on the other side, it needs to be divided onto this side. So I get that NS over NP times VP equals VS. I've just flipped this around really. Okay. So rearranging is something that you need to be able to do in physics, especially if you get to A level. It's exactly the same as in math, it's just a bit more complicated because you've got letters and not numbers. So now I've got that VS is equal to NS divided by NP times by VP. So I've just put the numbers in now. The second NS is the number of secondary cores, and I know that's 240. NP is the number of primary cores, and I know that's 200. And VP is the primary voltage, and I know that's 12 volts. If I put this into a calculator, I come out with the number, I've got this written down somewhere, 14.4 volts, because I need to have a unit. So the secondary voltage here is 14.4 volts. Now this means that this must be a step up transformer, because I've increased the voltage. And that makes sense, because I've got more coils in the secondary than I did in the, um, the primary. If this was the way around and I had 240 and 200, I'd decrease the voltage and it'd be a step-down transformer. So, I'm going to look at a slightly harder question. 
I'm going to write the equation down again just so we don't forget it. Vp over Vs equals Mp over Ms. Okay. A step down transformer reduces the voltage by 75%. If there are 4,000 turns in the primary coil, how, must there be on, how many must there be on the secondary coil? Now there's two ways to think about this. There's a common sense way and then there's a mathematical way. We're going to look at the mathematical way first. So it's really important to think this through. You're not given what the primary and secondary voltages are, but you are given a ratio. And that's fine, because we already have a ratio in our equation. So I've been told here, I could underline it, it reduces the voltage by 75%. So that means that the secondary voltage must be 75% smaller than the primary voltage. Or on the flip side, it must be a quarter, it must be 25% the same size. So the secondary voltage Vs is equal to 25% of Vp and I would rather write that mathematically as 0.25 times Vp. Now I in my equation I have Vp divided by Vs. This is more A level by the way so if it gets confusing don't panic too much. So I can instead instead of writing Vs equals 0.25 Vp I could write that 1 over 0.25, all I've done is move that over to the side, is equal to Vp divided by Vs. And that, 1 over a quarter, is equal to 4. Now Vp over Vs I've got in this equation here. So I now know that Vp over Vs equals 4, but that also equals Np over Ns. Now I want to know in this equation the secondary call. I want to know this number here, what Ns is. I know Np. So now I'm going to just move this up so I can have it on its own. Ns times 4 is equal to Np. I, want, I don't want the 4 here, I want it to go to the side. So Ns equals Np. I'm going to divide it on this side by 4. Now Np is the number of primary coils is equal to 4,000. Divide that by 4, I get 1,000 coils. Ns is 1,000. Now it doesn't actually have to have a unit. We'll write coils down just to make sure we know what we mean. So the secondary coil is the 1,000 and the primary coil is 4,000. Now that makes sense. If I'm reducing it by 75%, I'm reducing it by three quarters, the secondary voltage is going to be one quarter of what it used to be. And therefore, you need to have a quarter, you're going to reduce this number by 75% of the coil. So the common sense way would be like, right, 75% of 4,000, let's do that in a red pen. I could also write 75% of 4,000 equals 3,000. I'm reducing it by that, so it's 4,000 reduced by the 3,000. That equals 1,000 coils. So you could do it that way, or if you're unsure, you can do it mathematically, which is slightly harder, but you're always guaranteed to have it right. That's about as hard as you're going to get. It's a difficult subject, transformers, but just remember the how to rearrange the equation and the setup, the setup of the coils here, where you have a primary coil, a secondary coil, and remember it's all to do with the ratios between these two numbers of coils.